This video is brought to you by Nokian Tires, a leader in safety and sustainability. Maximize performance and efficiency with their made in USA all season tires and their dedicated Hakapalita EV winter line from the inventor of the winter tire. Learn more at nokiantires.com slash EV. Hello everyone, welcome. I'm Ryan and let's talk about aero caps for wheels. Some of them look all right, some of them look like that the point of them is to increase range but do they actually do anything let's go ahead and figure that out these are aero covers and their purpose is to improve aerodynamic efficiency and essentially what that does at the end of the day is increase the range of the vehicle now i'm really curious to know exactly how much of an effect it has is it measurable is it significant is it worth going after? I don't know the answers to that, so I've devised a test to figure that out. My plan for this efficiency test is pretty straightforward. I plan to run two nearly identical legs, one with aero caps and then one without, and I intend to control as many of the other variables as I possibly can. So my plan is to take this car and plug it in. We're gonna charge up to about 60%. Now, the reason I want to do that is to make sure that the battery is hot both times we leave from this location, both with aero caps and without aero caps. Once we reach 60% battery, we should have the battery nice and toasty. It should be a similar temperature both times. After that, we can head onto the highway right behind us, similar to how we do our range tests, and I'll be going 70 miles an hour. However, this time I'll be turning around in Cheyenne and then coming right back. This is similar to a lot of the efficiency loops that you've seen us do here and there. And once I get back here, my plan is to plug back in, charge back up to 60%, take off the aero covers, and rerun the test again. The temperature should be pretty constant throughout today. There's minimal wind. Other variables are, are pretty uh, constant, so I think it should be very straightforward. And the only difference between our runs should be whether or not the aero caps were on. Within the car, we'll get a lot of information as, as far as efficiency, energy use, and all that stuff, and that will help us figure out what effect those aero caps have, if any at all. I'm currently plugged in and charging up to 60%, and I have the AC set to 71 degrees, and I'm going to have that set the entire time for both tests as well as while I'm charging. This way, the car doesn't have to cool down a super hot cabin the moment I unplug. However, in both cases, I will be unplugging and the battery will still be hot, so some energy will be used in both legs to cool down the battery. It should be equal on both. Now, I'll be using the most uh, eco-friendly uh, mode possible on the air conditioning, as well as uh, the eco-friendly dry setting, which is chill mode here. I plan to go uh, 70 miles per hour GPS speed. That's 71 indicated on this car, actually and I won't draft any other vehicles, trucks, anything like that. And I'm going to keep all those variables exactly the same for both tests, both with and without the aero caps. That's 60% there, so I'll stop charging and unlock the charging port. And then, unplug and we can get going. Resetting the aero caps, and let's get going. You'll join me as I merge onto the highway. I'm merging onto I-25 North, and I'm doing some gentle acceleration here, like we normally do, and the purpose of that is to avoid uh, heat losses caused by acceleration and inefficiencies in the motor. So we're going to get up to 71 miles an hour and uh, set our cruise control there. Uh, that's 71. There we go. Set cruise control there. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we can just uh, keep this going. We're gonna go up to Cheyenne, which is, as you can see on this billboard, 32 miles away. And then turn back around. Of course, we'll try to avoid drafting any other trucks, any other vehicles, but I'm sure you guys are familiar with these. Uh, this part of the test. It's just sitting back and seeing what the vehicle can do. This is our exit. I'm gonna take us off cruise control and we can. Regenerative brake all 
way back in. Here we are, a diverging diamond. Pretty sure that's what it's called. These were fun, uh, almost as fun as my favorite traffic situation, which is the rare but occasional instance where you can make a legal uh, left turn on red. Uh, so if you got two one ways, you got a, a red, you can actually turn left. Now you know. Here's uh, some updates on the stats. I'm doing a gentle acceleration up to uh, 71 and heading back to Wellington. Here's our exit. I'm gonna bump us off cruise control and we can start decelerating. Didn't slam into the poles, good work. Those are our numbers. 58 miles, 12 kilowatt hours, 207 watt hours per mile. That's 4.8 miles per uh, kilowatt hour. Incredible results. Now let's uh, pop off the aero caps and do it all over again. Ooh, fancy. Nice. We have replaced all of the aero caps, and those are some dirty wheels that I need to clean. And we're gonna charge up to 60%. As you can see, battery is quite hot. A little, a few degrees cooler than last time, but very close. And of course, this is in service mode, uh, which gives you all that excellent data. Just hit 60%, so let's go into charging. Stop charging and unlock charging port. Let's unplug and then uh, get on the highway. Reset no arrow caps. All right, let's get going. Joining I-25 North again, now without arrow caps. And again, just doing the same gentle acceleration. I guess we're gonna go in behind this truck and then a gentle acceleration up to 70. And would you look at that, we're back at the turnaround spot. We can uh, exit this, uh, take this exit, of course, and as usual, we'll be using regen, not friction brakes. Getting a bunch of uh, all of that energy back into the battery before we head back around the other direction. behind a truck so we don't have to worry too much about harsh accelerations it'll be nice and gentle on this one and those are some numbers I believe that is that's very close to the numbers we were seeing with uh, with arrow caps I think maybe just a few percent uh, lower on the efficiency number but again we've got the second uh, half of this leg that we still have to complete uh, things can change so let's keep it going and, and not make any conclusions too quickly I wanted to mention that there's no discernible difference between these runs with and without aero caps, at least from the driver's seat. Of course, we'll see some sort of efficiency difference between the two runs, but from the driver's seat, I can't tell any difference in ride quality, of course, and I cannot tell any difference at all when it comes to sound. Now, I'm sure if we had a really controlled course with no wind and really high tech uh, sound recording equipment where we can do some uh, analyses on the frequencies and all that stuff, we might be able to see a difference. But realistically, I don't think you'll be able to hear it with your ear. So it's really just a visual thing as well as efficiency. It's not gonna affect uh, road noise. We're coming up at our exit and uh, there it is. I can kick it off of cruise control and uh, slowly bring it down. Reversing into the stalls. It's not smashing into anything. Awesome, great work. And 
those are our numbers, 209 watt hours per mile instead of 207. So let's crunch some numbers real quick. Well, I certainly was not expecting that. Less than 1% difference between with and without aero covers. That's just crazy to me. I was expecting much bigger. I was expecting two, three plus percent. Now, Car and Driver actually did a similar test several years ago. It was with the Model 3 with similar wheels. However, it was a different model uh, and older. So there's been a lot of updates to the vehicle. In their testing, they found at 70 miles per hour, there was a 2.5% difference in efficiency with and without aero caps. So we, are, we found a much, much lower number, uh, <laughs> less than 1% difference. That's absolutely crazy to me. What's even more is that over the entire range of this full battery, and we've done a range test in this, please go ahead and check that out if you haven't already, the difference of aero caps will only give you two and a half miles. That's about it. So uh, from our results, what we saw today, it's pretty clear that aero caps are not doing that much. They don't have that big of an effect. And I think that it's pretty safe to just choose whichever wheel style you think looks better. And you're not gonna see that big of an impact regardless. I'm looking forward to what you guys have to say. I'm curious if you guys have any thoughts as to why car and driver might've had uh, some different results. I know it was a different vehicle, but I would think that it'd be a little bit closer just uh, as far as efficiencies. But those are the results we got, a less than 1% difference. I'll talk to you guys on the next one.